let's talk about how MAPA made a mistake that may have cost them hundreds of millions of dollars. And no, it's not what you think. Ever since Demon Slayer turned the Mugen Train arc into a movie and made absolute bank at the box office, I've been putting together a list of other anime that should have followed suit. In this video, we're going to talk about a big one. Attack on Titan, the final chapters. Here's why. First off, let's get this out of the way. I don't know what deals MAPPA had laid out, and if it was legally feasible for them to actually turn these chapters into a movie. It is absolutely possible that their deal with, say, Toonami forbid them from turning the final chapters into a movie. I am not arguing the legality of it, simply the merit of it. With that said, the final chapters should have been a movie. Clearly they think so too, because now Chainsaw Man is getting a movie for the Reze arc. The first special ran 61 minutes, the second special ran 85, and there was some overlap between the ending of one and the beginning of two. So really you have about a total of 140 minutes between the two. Mugen Train was 119 minutes, so it's not like people aren't going to sit down for that long and watch in theaters. Let's keep going. Now, you could say that comparing Attack on Titan to Demon Slayer may not be the best comparison. You could certainly argue that Demon Slayer is more popular than Attack on Titan, and that using Mugen Train's numbers, which are the highest grossing anime numbers ever, is unwise. And you may be right, but let's compare the state of the series and the arcs themselves for a moment. Mugen Train came out during COVID in 2020 and 2021, after the series began in 2019. It's an arc between the first and second seasons of the show, and that made over $500 million worldwide. Attack on Titan Final Chapters would have released in 2023 or 2024 as a movie, concluding a series that began in 2013. Keyword being concluding. If you have to watch this to see the end of the series, the seats are going to be filled. I can't think of anything that's ever happened like that before. And there's no way you can tell me with a straight face that the conclusion to one of the biggest series of all time in movie theaters wouldn't be a massive event. Would the final chapter movie make more than Mugen Train? I would hope so. But let's say it doesn't because Mugen Train is an outlier. How far off would it be then? The Boy and the Heron came out in 2023 and made $160 million. Suzume came out in 2022 and made $324 million. Those are both original films from highly regarded directors. But are they going to make more money than the 10-year conclusion to one of the most popular anime ever? I tend to doubt it. But there's more, so let's keep going. What about other anime movies? 2022 also saw the release of One Piece Film Red and the first Slam Dunk. If we throw in 2021's Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, that's three recent anime films. And they made 246 million, 279 million, and 196 million respectively. Sure, these are all popular series in their own right. But again, none of these movies were the conclusion to a series. Some of them were set in the past, so even if the final chapters only fell within this range, which again, I doubt, that's still roughly $200 million at the box office as your floor. The fan base is cemented, so as far as I can tell, there's little risk here. I mean, do we really believe that there is any chance in hell they made the equivalent of a $200 million box office from Crunchyroll and Toonami? Maybe? But I doubt it especially when both could license the right to play it later on anyway, like Crunchyroll did with Mugen Train. So strictly from a financial perspective, this seems to make a ton of sense. We're looking at somewhere between 200 and 500 million dollars at the box office, still with the probable ability to be licensed later, and make even more. To me, this seems like a no-brainer. This would also have allowed the animators to improve some of the animation by increasing the budget and not forcing two entries in a year instead of one. More time to work on the series means it's going to look better. And look, I love the final chapters, especially part two. It was an excellent conclusion to, in my opinion, the greatest show of all time. The story was amazing, the cinematography was a masterclass, and the action was excellent, but the animation? 
That left something to be desired at times. I mean, yes, the animation on the fights was incredible, but you could tell they definitely blew the budget there, because when we got to some of those vision scenes with Mikasa and Armin, you could tell there was some really inconsistent animation going on at that point. Check some of these things out. This reeks of working on a tight budget and not having time to clean up all the things that they should have or wanted to. Let's be honest. We know MAPPA's rep on these things. Giving them more time and doing one special instead of two with the high likelihood of making more money seems like a win for everyone, especially since both parts dropped within the same year anyway. If people knew a movie was coming out, you don't have people flipping out nearly as much not knowing when part two is coming out anyway. In theory, it even allow them to pay these guys more for all the hard work they're putting into a series like this, though I wouldn't count on it. So yeah, between the high financial upside, the longer schedule, and adding more anticipation for the fans, I can say conclusively that on paper, Attack on Titan, the final chapters, should have been a movie. If you liked this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts below.